Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a Let's Play of Blood Bowl. This is episode number four, and I am still the illusionist. And I am losing. I'm playing the Dwarven Ironbeards. We're fighting off against the Sun's Children, a Lizardman team. We're currently 1 0 down, at the beginning of the second half. It's not all gone against me. A lot of injured lizards in the box, a couple knocked out as well. Unfortunately, I have lost a character as well. My Blitzer has been badly injured. I have no one left with agility greater than two. So I'm going to really struggle to pick up the ball this time around. As always, N and G. So we have a better look at what we're doing. I currently outnumber my opponent. Ten characters to six. So, if I'm really careful here, I should be able to back them into a corner and keep them beat down while my guy at the back picks up the ball and starts running for the end zone. If he can get the ball, of course. My opponent's finished setting up. Go for an arrowhead style setup here, where his two Saurus try to knock aside this side of my lineup, leaving these guys isolated, they will do anything. And lets my skinks, his skinks rather, slip through the gap unopposed. It's nice weather, the ball bounces one more time, right in front of my blocker. Perfect. I am receiving, so I get the first turn. And I start by beating people over the head. If you remember the first half in my last episode, you remember that the plan is to start beating down and beating down hard on his skinks. These guys have all the ball carrying capacity. Ooh, knocked down. I'm knocked out. Good start to the turn. He's now outnumbered very nearly two to one and two of his heavy hitters are out, making the fights much more likely to go in my way. As I say, the plan is to start fighting and attacking his skinks specifically. If I can take them out, he has even worse agility than I do. If he can't handle the ball, pick it up and run with it, he can't score. So I outnumber him, the fights start going in my favour, and at long last, if I'm really lucky, the tackling will allow me to get the ball carrying game in my favour too. Really strong start to the half. Could have done with more of this last turn around. Two skinks, two saurus have gone down, two in the dugout. Hopefully we can take down the crocs or two. Defender stumbles, yes! One of my mercenaries, Demek, taking the hit. A lot of people don't like mercenaries because if they cause an injury or a touchdown or something, you don't get to keep their star player points unless you hire them outright later on. This early in the league, it's only the second game, I don't think it really matters. It's more important to have a full healthy team and get a strong start than to worry about farming star player points. Get established a little bit, get a decent number of players on the pitch, then start worrying about getting your specialist down, I think. Works better for some teams than it does for others. Picked up the ball, good start. If you see down at the bottom here, I needed a 5 plus to achieve that. Got a 5 to do that. Great start. The Saurus are on the other side of a wall of blockers. They're not going through anytime soon. Skinks, too far away to get anywhere near him. Even if they could dodge through the line, they're going to struggle to knock him down and take the ball off him in the next couple of turns. And of course, that works both ways. He didn't have to blitz, but he's moved back into my tackle zone. So he's pinning those two guys in place. They can't dodge away. And he's given the Croxigore something to help him out. If he does decide to attack later on, he's not going to be completely outnumbered by the guys standing around him. Not that will make too much of a difference to a strength 5 guy, but I do have these three guys on the edge who could 
potentially surround it and make his life difficult. It's one less thing to worry about. Ooh, really unlucky. He spent a re-roll, he still failed his dodge roll to try and get away. What he was trying to do is loop around the top. Obviously my guy is going to make his way around this way. He's putting obstacles in the way. Didn't quite get it this turn. Which goes entirely in my favour, unfortunately. Unfortunately for him. Move the blocker up. The guy in the middle. Starts knocking down his Saurus. He gets them both down. Absolutely fine. I have the block skill, he doesn't. That's pretty much ideal for me. Which allows me now to gang up on the Croxigore, four on one, uh, for a strength advantage. Of course, what I really should be doing at this point, I should be moving my blocker with the ball further up first. Why? It doesn't take any dice rolls to do that. I can't fail, I just walk in a straight line. Whereas potentially, I could have rolled double skulls there, re-rolled double skulls again, my guy goes down. I turn over, I'm still one more turn away from the end zone. Always do the easy stuff first. That way you get as much of your turn being as efficient as possible. Move the blocker up. At this point, I'm not worried about assists because there's nothing on the opponent's team who can really threaten me in a fight. But lots of tackle zones around this guy, one around him. If anyone's going to attack my ball carrier, they have to go the long way around to do it, or they have to make a lot of dodge rolls. Again, make your opponent dodge as much as you can. The more they have to do, the more likely they are to fail a roll. The game goes in your favour by getting turnovers. It's so moving the guys up, marking that skink, uh, even if he was about to run through the big mob of people in front of him. Try one more go on the croc to go, just see if I can take him down. And I do! Great! Doesn't achieve a lot, he will just get straight back up at the next turn. He's one square further away from my ball carrier. Doesn't sound like much, but it can make all the difference when it comes to any kind of blitzes or attacks later on. Same with the Saurus. I probably should have followed up on him at that point, so that he has to either dodge or blitz to get out of the way. However, I didn't, so now he gets to make the choice. Burns a re-roll doing it, which isn't bad for me. Shows my guy out the way, and as I said before, he starts moving into the right-hand lane, putting as many obstacles as he can between my ball carrier and the end zone. It's a good tactic. He's also pinned this blocker in place, so no preemptive attacks makes it harder for my guys to maneuver as well. And since I'm dwarf, movement four, I'm not that maneuverable to begin with. More guys moving up. It's really good thinking on the side of the Lizardman player. Not only is he threatening me in the next turn, he's got this guy waiting up here in the turn after. On the off chance that his next plan fails, he's got a backup happening straight away. Thinking two turns ahead, it's a good way to plan. Do I remember to take my own advice this time? Kind of. I've moved the guy, I've not thrown any dice yet. Really should move my ball carrier sooner rather than later. No, nope. clearly I've got better things to do. Try and take the skink down. I re-roll it. I could probably have got away with not doing that actually and just push the guy. But no, I want him down. I want him out of the way. Ideally, I want all the skinks off the table if I can. Two turns away from a touchdown. A badly battered skink between me and victory. 
Now I'm just marking the Saurus. If I can get an attack off on him and knock him down, it's a lot less to worry about than it was prior. And I get it, Defender down. And I follow up, so that way he's still surrounded by three of my players. So if he tries to attack, he's going to be outnumbered. <sighs> Should have picked that guy up early. There's no reason not to. If that would all gone wrong, at least I'd have him on the table pinning that skink. Instead, for some reason, I'm going for the croc skull before I'm going for the skink. I hate that croc skull. I want him gone. Yeah, no, nope. might get lucky. At the very least, he's out of the way for this turn as well. Okay, marking on the skink. Makes life a bit harder for the Saurus as well. If he has to blitz, he's going to really struggle to get up close to these guys and do it. Tricky situation for the Lizardman player. In this situation, I'm not sure what I'd do. Um, possibly blitz the Troll Slayer with the Saurus, so I could follow up further this way. And then put the Saurus simply around in front of the blocker. Putting the Skink in the way, certainly a good idea as well. He's trying to gang up on the blocker. Uh, two of them on one guy. It's certainly one dice, but... Add this guy. Suddenly it's two dice in his favour. Both down, both down. Reroll. Both down and pushed. Really lucky for me. That could have gone horribly wrong. However, I'm still right on the edge of the table. One more block next turn. I go off the pitch. Drop the ball. Lose a player for the drive. As I said before, learn how to push people off the table. It's one of your biggest assets if you can do it consistently. Well, that was just unlucky. The source is trying to get round, probably to mark these two players so they couldn't assist and attack the skinks. And he fell over. Unlucky, it happens sometimes. Now, as I'm trying to do, I need to get this blocker away from these two skinks. Realistically, I'm not dodging. So what I'm thinking is using Frenzy to my advantage. What I want to do is this. Blitz this skink. Push him into this one, which means I can move him out of the way. Perfect. I now only have one skink next to my blocker. Frenzy lets me attack again. Can I push this guy or knock him down? Yes, I can. That went absolutely perfectly. I couldn't be luckier than that. I managed to push both skinks out of the way and knock down the one guy that was in the way. Which means the only way he can stop from scoring is by blitzing, dodging out of a tackle zone with agility 1 with this Saurus and knocking the blocker over. Not easy. Especially if I do that. So now he has to dodge around two blockers and I've got an assist, making it only a one dice block. Pushing his skinks around for fun and profit. So close. I can almost score. Again, marking up the skink. It's one more tackle zone forward. It has to dodge twice to get anywhere near my blocker. Minimising my risk all the time. Again, another body between the Saurus and my ball carrier. I don't want him anywhere near me. Again, really unlucky. He went for a go for it, a dodge. Didn't get it. He's burned his rerolls too quickly. As have I, perhaps. But, okay. I'm being a bit smug here. That paid off. I injured the skink. 
which I probably shouldn't have done. I'm in such a commanding position already. I could have scored at any point. That's as much insult as it was injury. But, despite what I said about farming star player points, get them while you can. No harm there. And in some ways, I've helped him out. I've given him his Saurus back at the end of the drive. If I had really wanted to, I could have had that Dwarf hanging out, running backwards and forwards on the touchline, right up until the end of turn 16, and there'd be no way he'd be able to stop me. As it is, I've given him a player, i put the ball back into his hands, because I'm going to be kicking. He's got a chance to pull ahead. I've got too greedy there. This could cost me in the long run. Absolutely no subtlety at all. I line my guys up, bash them as hard as I can into his guys. And again, he's going for the wedge push. This is where he puts all his players on one side, gets as many advantageous blocks as he can. Basically nullifies my numbers advantage because there's four guys here who aren't adding anything to the fight. They're going to have to at least move or blitz before they can do anything. Meanwhile, he's got all his strength pushed through this one side. Knocks all my guys down. The skinks can run through with impunity. Or well, at least that's the plan. Quick snap means he moves his characters one space. Not great. Gets him a bit close to the ball, which is what you need uh, when you're against the clock. He's only got four turns to score. No re-rolls to do it. He can't afford risks. I'm not sure what he's thinking about here. He's, any, he's moved the two guys. Ah, here we go. He's surrounding mine. Pushing them not only into my half, away from the table edge. Making a completely clear avenue down this one side. With no way of me getting into it. And again, he moves further to the left. Another blocker no longer part of the line so now he's fighting me on even numbers he's a lot stronger than I am he's getting two dice blocks and only two dice blocks in his favour there you go exactly what he wanted a two wide channel so even if I manage to get him I can only push him once rather than twice into the crowd Knocks another guy down. I question the wisdom of that. I would perhaps have attacked the blocker first and pushed him this way, away from the table edge. Attacking him here pushes him closer to the table edge. So if a skink does come down this way, you know, I'm a dwarf. It cost me three movement points just to stand up. This one is the difference between getting an attack or zone and not. Push them this way. So it's going to take me two turns to get near his ball carrier rather than just one. Still tricky, but, you know, he has to score, otherwise he's snatching a draw from the jaws of victory. And there's always plenty of blood on the pitch where it belongs. Not much more he could have done with that. Uh, really unlucky. He didn't get to knock down more of my players. He attacked four of them. Got only th three downs. Kind of bewildered as to why he left this guy in the middle. Because now I have surrounded his Croxagor. Which is kind of what I want to do. Oh well. not sure why I followed up as well because now it's three on three and he still has, still has the strength advantage for some reason I really want to take this Saurus down I think just to get him away from the line so my guys can run freely across here uh, not a great plan so by the time it actually comes to effect the skink will be down here I still can't catch the guy go for it Put a tackle zone in the way. Start knocking these guys down. 
Dauntless goes off. Great. Push the guy. Still get two dice against him. Ah, attacker down. So that sucks. Um, <laughs> that could have cost me the game, actually. I mean, this this Saurus has to knock this one guy over. Skink runs around. He's quite happily free in the clear. And the dice. Answer back. Attacker down, attacker down. No re-rolls. Quite possibly the worst stroke of luck for both of us in a row. Probably worse for him. Because now... I want to kick his skink's head in. Potentially, I can get it off the board, in fact. See how frenzy goes. Push to the edge. For some reason, I chose Defender down. Having said that, I don't have any rerolls. So it's possible I push him there and then get double skulls and go down. And all I've done is pushed him away from the rest of my team, which is exactly what I don't want. Marking up his other skink, so he has to dodge not just into a tackle zone, but out of one as well. Start facing down the Croxgull and the Saurus if I can. Of casualties. It's not often you see lizard men get so badly beaten up. I mean, the skinks are kind of weak and feeble, but I've knocked out four, five Saurus in this game. That's really unusual. Right now, I'm kind of stalling for time. Uh, realistically, I'm not going to pick the ball up. If I do, it's going to be a fluke. I'm not playing for a draw. Realistically, I think that's my best chance at this point. <laughs> Although everyone is down, so you never know. It might be worth trying. I mean, what'll I do? Skip a turn? Well, everyone's on the floor. It's not going to cost me anything if I do. There's my insurance. Even if this guy does get the ball and get up and move, I stop my guys moving towards where he's going to be next turn, not where he is now. Just going around this the long way, that'd be suicide. That'd, that'd cost him the match. Or at least it'd guarantee a draw, which maybe he wants. Surprised the Croxigor, he's only failed his bonehead roll once, despite doing something every turn otherwise. That's quite unusual. I mean, it's only a 1 in 6 chance, but... Or is it? Bonehead is... Yeah, a 1. This is what I expected. Saurus knocks over the Troll Slayer. Clear Avenue down the side, where the Skink can pick up the ball and move with impunity, hopefully. Big old mass of bodies. Normally I wouldn't complain about this, because this would be where I want to be, but with these Saurus around, it's really hard to get any two or even one dice blocks against them. Oh, lucky. That was just perfect for me. Um, he tried to pick up the ball, failed. It gets thrown further away from the end zone, and even further away from his two remaining ball carriers. For good measure, I kick another skink in the teeth, as they deserve it. It doesn't even matter that that was a stun ball rather than a push. I had sort of a two in three chance of getting him off the board at that point. Defence on the blocker. So I can push a Saurus around, hopefully knock him over. At this point, it's going to be a draw. I'm just trying to grind out some star player points by injuring his Saurus and injuring his Skinks. Doesn't seem nice, but 
doesn't have to be. This is going to be a draw. Neither is can score. I've got to take what I can from this match at this point. And if that means getting ready for the next one. I think the dice have been pretty fair to us both so far. I took an extra in an early injury which was really tricky, but my opponents failed more dice rolls than I have generally. That's just to upset that Saurus. He can't easily get through there. Especially not if I do this to his face. Pow. Two Saurus are down. They're not getting the ball. Croxica is surrounded. He's not getting the ball. Skink's looking pretty lonely. He's not getting the ball. Pretty harsh, actually. Another turn. I could easily score, perhaps. But wound down the clock. Look at that. Pick up the ball three times in three goes. Who's that? Yartrek Gold Mountain. It's not the same guy, so it's, I don't have a super sub taking over from my deceased runner. But for some reason, the dwarves want to play ball. This is weird. I'm probably getting the heads kicked in, but you can't have everything. Gets a tackle on the blocker just because. Why not? He's doing the same thing. He can't score. He needs star player points. And he can do that by injuring my players. Great. No long-term effect. I don't even waste my apothecary on that one. You can have that. Two out of six. He doesn't level up. But a small victory. I don't begrudge him that. And that was just greedy. I'm not sure what he was trying to do. <laughs> just pick up the ball to prove he can, I guess. I'd probably do the same with his pace. However, full time. 16 turns apiece. Everyone spent their re-rolls. One all. The Iron Beards versus the Sun's Children. A quick look at the stats. Match rating 13 out of 20. Eh, slightly above average, I guess. I'd, I'd agree with that. Plenty of injuries. Four KOs sustained, all of which on Saurus. Unusual. Uh, ball possession, blah, blah, blah. Two more injuries on my turn, on my team. At least they don't last on this time. So children. Croxigore gets the MVP. That's actually really good for this guy. Uh, like the Saurus, the Croxigore isn't going to be picking up the ball. And Bonehead even makes it unreliable he's going to injure people. Getting a big boost early on, getting some good skills like block, just what he needs. Glad that works out for him. And this guy, I think he was the last guy to KO the Saurus in the second half. Doesn't really do anything for him. Uh, I get a blocker at level 2. Not sure what I'll take. I usually take guard early on, although sometimes stand firm is pretty useful. Put him in a line so he can't be moved, and that upsets people quite a bit. See the injuries, see the goals. Yeah. Sun's Children won, the Iron Beards won. So far, second game, undefeated. Hopefully keep this going. Thank you very much for watching. I'm the Illusionist. This is Blood Bowl. Take care. Bye-bye.